for Crimea Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadma joins me to discuss transforming the masculine domain of the judiciary. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Yes. Are you saying in the column that the entry of more and more women into professions is meaningless unless there is adequate account of their role as mothers? I'm not wanting to say that numbers don't matter. I think it's very important that you have more women who are advocates, more women who are judges. Uh, numbers do matter. But I think uh, the way in which progress towards gender equality is being measured in South Africa is tending to be with a focus almost entirely on numbers. How many women are in the boardroom, or in the case of black people, how many black people are in top management, this sort of thing. Now, the argument that I try to make in the article is that you can admit women into the legal profession, but they don't come with uh, the same conditions as men, especially if they are mothers. Um, and my argument is that it is not really equality if you don't take into account that the man who comes into the legal profession may be free to do things at all hours and not have any constraints on his movement if he is asked to go and take a case in Cape Town he will just fly down. But mm -hmm. if you are a mother of a toddler, you can't do that. And um, so what I've, I've argued then is that um, the legal profession and all professions need to understand, not that all women are mothers. I don't agree with Zuma's notion that to be a woman you must be a mother. It's an existential choice. You decide whether you want to be a mother or not. But when you decide to be a mother, you are doing something that is socially important for our society. By bringing up a child, by bearing a child, and by rearing a child, you are performing a social duty because if we have no more children, we have no more South Africans in the future. We don't have a labor force, we don't have lawyers, don't have all those things. So that it's not just uh, an act of fancy to have a child. So it needs to be accommodated in the way in which one caters for women's entry into the profession. It must be catered for in terms of maternity, and paternity leave. It must be catered for in terms of um, the type of situation that was highlighted in the case that I dealt with, where um, what they consider to be good cause excludes the need of a mother to take um, care of children who are very young and have been traumatized. That they cannot find this to be good cause is um, quite shocking, but what it does show is that they have not understood the complexity of realizing gender equality. It's important that we understand that it's not just attitudes, mm. that uh, men are not prejudiced against women, that they don't see them purely as decorative, all that's very, very good, that you uh, want to treat a woman as an equal, just on merit and all of that, but you've got to go further. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what are the conditions under which this person has entered? Just as we need to understand that when black people come into certain jobs, the way they get to work mm -hmm. may well be much more complicated than that of a more privileged person from a more privileged background. So I, I'm not discounting numbers, mm. but I'm saying we need to look at the whole person if we want to 
realize gender equality. And you also say that the process of unequal entry into the legal profession starts way back uh, before the Judicial Services Commission. Can you elaborate on that one? Well, you know, um, if you come from uh, Mpumalanga, from a township in Mpumalanga, mm. your chances of getting university admission are much less than someone who grows up in Saxon world in Johannesburg and goes to the best schools and uh, has in the home a lot of books to read, has access to a computer, all these things. When you go to university, I mentioned this last time, if you are in a rural area and you're doing it through correspondence, it's a lot more difficult. But let's yes. move to the city, let's or to a town. If you want to get articles to become an attorney or pupillage to become an advocate, they are networks. One of the judges who was being interviewed referred to this boys club. Now there's not just a boys club, there is a general um, network of people who know one another, who've uh, briefed people, who've played golf with people, and these people, these networks, are able to determine who will succeed mm. as at the bar, either by briefing them, by giving them the experience in cases, or having them as juniors when you're a senior counsel. And a lot of women uh, are not given the opportunity to learn on the job because of these networks, uh, because uh, the bar may now have many women there, but it has been a masculine domain. Mm. Uh, they are uh, not used to interacting with women on this basis. They are the people who they see as being pretty or not pretty, uh, people who are decorations for them. So a number of these attitudes have to be changed and I think that it doesn't um, only happen at the level of the Judicial Service Commi Committee. There are a number of social um, networks and associations that go to determine who makes it in life, mm. whether it's the bar or anywhere else. Um, you know, if you want to be interviewed to be a prospective art world clerk or lawyer, do you have transport easily? Uh, where are you coming from? How far are you from this? Mm. Do you have um, a suit mm. that will impress these people in the interview? Or will you look scruffy, even if you wash yourself well? But you may also come from an area where there's not clean water. So there's a whole lot of disadvantages that some people have in the legal profession, but in jobs in general. And I think these are factors that come into play before, uh, long before reaching the Judicial Services Commission. So I think we need to increase the numbers mm. of women in the legal profession, but we need to make the legal profession uh, more user-friendly for women who come there. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Prima Media's policy about transforming the judiciary.